Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Anju Gomes and I am the Director of Middle East at ICA Congress and Convention Association, widely known as ICA, which is, uh, of course, everybody knows that it's a global community and a knowledge hub for the association meetings industry. This year, uh, IMEX has cancelled and so we meet here on a virtual platform to update uh, of what's happening in the Middle East uh, since post-COVID, uh, uh, during and now on the recovery part. Uh, before I start with our panelists, one of the burning questions that we have been uh, um, hindering me is, why are we under this attack uh, from this virus in such a dynamic era? and who thought that we would face the situation after a century. Yes, in 1918, uh, uh, we had the same situation uh, and we, we, faced, we faced a situation where human was again vulnerable and we had the same situation what we are going through today. However, our industry is of course among the most affected sectors. But I must share with you some some development that took place post 1918 to now, to 2019. As per the World Travel Council, uh, the travel and the tourism sector experienced 3.5 growth in only 2019. And this is to say like 8.6% uh, is uh, totally from uh, GDP uh, level to Middle East alone. And as per uh, UNWTO estimates in 2019, Middle East was poised to attract 195 million visitors to 2030, but we don't know what it looks like. We don't know what 2030 is going to look like. We have all set a reset button now. However, we have learned three C's, which is during this time, we have learned how to communicate, how we should collaborate, and how we have to be creative and think out of the box. In the Middle East, governments have embraced the challenges and the opportunities, and all of their efforts have been strategized towards digitalization and transforming and also supporting our local stakeholders. Though the impacts are unrepairable, I think we are all working towards being crisis ready and resilient. With that, I would like to welcome our amazing panel today, who will provide us with an overview of the impact, their experiences, their challenges, and the future of the meeting industry in the Middle East, in the short and in the long term. From Abu Dhabi Department of Culture and Tourism, I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Mubarak Al Shamsi, Director of Abu Dhabi Convention and Exhibition Bureau. From Oman Ministry of Tourism, I am pleased to welcome Mr. Khalid Al-Zadzeli, Director of Oman Convention Bureau. From Qatar Tourism Authority, I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Ahmed al -Obedli, Director of Exhibition at Qatar National Tourism Council. And from Department of Tourism and Commerce Marketing, I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Steen Jacobson, Vice President of Dubai Business Events. So let's start with our first panelist and that will be our uh, Mr. Ahmed. Um, can I uh, ask you a question, Ahmed? Firstly, of course, I would like you to introduce yourself and QNTC to us. And from my next question, uh, I will uh, I'll just first, before I ask you the question, I will just stop sharing my screen. So, Ahmed, uh, uh, what about uh, how about looking forward from here, assuming that we are all back to normal and we don't have any more COVID, uh, what do you foresee for Qatar in the coming three to 12 months? Uh, thank you, Anju. Good afternoon, uh, good morning and good evening to some of the people and members. Uh, where is Qatar going? And uh, first I would like to say that, uh, or they give you the good news, uh, the National Tourism Council has uh, act, launched a new activational arm called the Qatar Business Events Corporation. Uh, with this uh, corporation or this company, it will be able to uh, manage and operate uh, the venues in Qatar, which is about uh, 76,000 square meter. And uh, we'll be able to uh, do international and local festivals. 
uh, where is uh, Qatar do going for the next phase and the, what, how did uh, the country dealt with the, the current situation? Um, Qatar has responded to the COVID pandemic rapidly with uh, widespread, uh, widespread testing, uh, contact tracing with the Institute of uh, Safety and Hygiene Measures, uh, based on the guidelines that was uh, set up with the Ministry of Public Health and the Supreme uh, Committee uh, for Crisis. Uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, Qatar was on a track achievement base. It showed from the period of January until um, March of 2019, it showed the growth. The growth was about uh, 41%. Uh, even in the business sector, it showed the growth of 44% over, uh, uh, over the past uh, five years. While in uh, 2019, uh, we saw an increase in the number of uh, exhibitions and conferences uh, we were obtaining the license from the National uh, Tourism Council. Uh, all of this was like uh, prior to the COVID. Uh, with the Ministry of Public Health and the Supreme uh, Committee for Crisis Management, uh, we launched a new program called the Qatar Clean Program. Uh, this program uh, allows your hotel or your, uh, um, let's say, restaurant or your cultural activity to slowly reduce the measures of COVID. So they have, we have put these guidelines where we have until now uh, 90 hotels uh, have already been certified with the Qatar Clean program and they are ready uh, to operate. Um, the phase four or on September uh, 15, we have entered the, the phase four of uh, removing or uh, uh, lowering down uh, the measures. So we have, uh, we can hold an exhibition. We have the first exhibition will be held at the Doha Exhibition and Conference Center. Uh, the first B2C, actually local B2C, uh, it will be held on the next week with 50% uh, of occupancy of the, of, of the hall. Uh, for the meetings, uh, and we have a small to medium size meetings. So the allowed or the guidelines is 40 to 80. And uh, for the weddings is about 250 people. Um, for or what, what, what bids we have won or what's coming for 2021, since uh, most of the bids for 2020 were postponed. Uh, we have for 2021, the Qatar and Ukraine Trade Investment Forum. It's a B2B meetings. And we have a number of uh, ICAP one meetings, which is the ISOCARB. Uh, annual meeting and uh, the 2020 World Association for Sports Management. We are uh, looking uh, hopefully to open uh, the business and to, for by next week and to host our first meeting here, safe using the both uh, the ICA and the UFI uh, global uh, standards for uh, safety and standard. And I'll stop over there. Thank you. Andrew, we have you muted. Thank you, Ahmed, uh, for updating us on uh, Qatar Next Step. Um, we have uh, Khalid as well, who has just uh, joined in, and I would uh, give him some time. Uh, in, the, in the meanwhile, uh, let's go to our uh, next panelist. So uh, my next question is to Steve. Uh, Steen, please tell us uh, about uh, DBE and how Dubai is adapting or uh, reworking uh, its contribution to meet the current needs of the business events and what does the future look like? Uh, is it going to be collaboration or competition? Uh, what, would you, what would you say to these teachers? Well, thank you, Andrew, um, and uh, hello, everyone. So um, I represent Dubai Business Events and we're the Convention Bureau uh, for Dubai and uh, part of uh, part of Dubai Tourism. Um, so um, when the pandemic uh, hit the shores of the UAE, the authorities here were very quick in responding uh, with uh, with measures um, that could ensure that the that the uh, consequences that they were they were reduced. Um, I think uh, the UAE has been um, handling the situation incredibly well. Uh, the situation here in Dubai now is very positive. We opened our borders again on the 7th of July, 
Um, so uh, we're seeing visitors come in to Dubai again. Uh, of course, um, complying with safety and health protocols that's been put in place, um, led by Dubai Tourism uh, in partnership with other government partners and, uh, and private stakeholders to ensure the safety uh, of, all, of all residents and visitors um, coming, into, uh, coming into Dubai. Testing has been a very important uh, measure for the authorities. Uh, on the 1st of September, more than 7 million tests had been, had been conducted throughout the UAE since the pandemic started, which puts the UAE among the top 10 countries in the world uh, in responding, to, uh, in responding to, the, uh, to the pandemic. We've implemented a number of, of, of mandatory uh, uh, precautionary measures, such as wearing face masks when you're out in public, uh, undergoing thermal screening whenever you uh, enter a, a building. But apart from that, our life is in Dubai pretty much back to normal. Uh, all economic sectors are operating uh, uh, in full again. Uh, all malls, restaurants, um, attractions, uh, gyms, public transportation uh, and offices are also operating uh, in full again, which is, um, which is, very, which is very positive. Um, throughout the city, uh, a number of measures and, of course, protocol has been put in place. Um, we introduced a program called Dubai Assured, um, which is for, for restaurants, um, for, for retail, uh, for hotels, to demonstrate that they are fully complying with precautionary measures put in place by the authorities. And uh, that gives the assurance to visitors uh, to residents that uh, that they are complying uh, and they can put that stamp uh, on their um, on their on their establishments and so far more than a thousand establishments has actually received this by a short a stamp. We also received the Safe City uh, stamp by the World Travel and Tourism Council, uh, which uh, which also documents the fact that the precautionary measures that have been put in place that they are that they are they are they are working. As I mentioned, uh, in July, we opened our borders. So uh, uh, that has been uh, made possible again. Also, the fact that Emirates uh, and Fly Dubai are now uh, in operation again. Um, they are almost uh, daily increasing the number of destinations that they operate to. Uh, Emirates is uh, now operating more than 85 destinations uh, in, their, in their route network and, and more is being added on. Uh, visitors coming into Dubai are required to to, uh, to take a PCR test and show a negative uh, PCR uh, test certificate um, minimum on for the test being taken minimum 96 hours before departure. And if you and if you can uh, prove that, that uh, then 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 there are no restrictions on on any nationalities or any any uh, any any markets visiting uh, visiting uh, Dubai. Uh, another great initiative uh, put in place by the airlines both. Fly Dubai and Emirates is the fact that they are covering any COVID-19 medical related expense that you may have as a traveler uh, if you travel on, on any of their on any of uh, those two uh, those two airlines. When it comes to events in particular, um, we uh, we've been working uh, very closely with the authorities uh, and other uh, private stakeholders across the city to develop uh, clear guidelines that can allow us to resume business events again. And uh, just as of 15th of September, um, we are resuming uh, local business events. And our, as of 1st of October, international business events, uh, again, uh, will, be, uh, will be made possible. Um, the guidelines, of course, ensures things like complete sanitation of the venue before, during, and after, um, requirements to wear a face mask, social distancing, um, their requirements in terms of uh, food, um, uh, set up in rooms and so on. Um, but all these uh, precaution measures being met, uh, business events can resume. And we are, we are looking at, uh, at a number of events um, that will be taking place here in Dubai over the next few months. So we are very excited that the, that the industry is now, is now back. We had a test event happening in July, um, the AI Everything Summer Conference which was a conference attracting uh, 600 delegates that looked at how the UAE had implemented artificial intelligence in, um, in, uh, um, in combating the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. 
that event was the first event that we held and we tested uh, all these precautionary measures and it was a very successful event that then allowed us to finalize the guidelines, issue them and then get the green light to go ahead and resume, uh, uh, and, and, um, and resume uh, events. Throughout uh, the last few months, we've stayed um, uh, active, uh, engaging with, of course, event organizers who had events planned for Dubai um, that we needed to support, uh, either in, in, uh, in, in postponing, a few had to cancel, but really to help them ensure that they could, uh, that they could make the necessary, uh, necessary arrangements. We've been active and, and busy doing a lot of webinars, um, like this one where we could engage with event organizers from across the world uh, to tell them about the situation here in Dubai and how things were progressing. Uh, there's been a number of campaigns that we have, uh, that we've, that we've launched um, to keep uh, Dubai at top of mind and make sure that the awareness uh, stayed uh, on top. And then uh, finally, supporting our local stakeholders, which has been a key role for us, working closely, collaborative with them uh, to ensure that we're all aligned uh, in, our, in our response. So as of now, um, we, are, we are optimistic about the future. We know it will realistically be a while before we are, we are back and we see, see the events as we, as we know with a, a usually a very busy calendar of conferences and exhibitions and trade shows, intensive programs happening in Dubai. Um, but, uh, but we are cautiously optimistic about how the situation is progressing at the moment. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Steen. So um, just to ask one um, information as well, uh, when, is you, when do you think uh, is your first business event as in uh, an association? Is there anything happening before the end of the year or is it not yet decided? So uh, uh, the, uh, the, the local associations, the medical societies that we have throughout the UAE, they are very eager to start getting their um, their meeting activities back online. And so we're in dialogue with a lot of our local uh, national uh, association and societies. And uh, many of them have plans to resume their, their, their event activities in the next few months. Um, a lot of them are looking at doing hybrid events. Uh, so with a, both a virtual component, but also with a face-to-face -face component to ensure at least they can get back and do, uh, do some, some meeting activity and offer the training, the education and the knowledge uh, to, their, to their members. So that's how we're seeing it at the moment. Uh, it will be the local uh, events that will resume first uh, with some regional uh, attendance, of course, um, uh, provided that, uh, that, that no travel restrictions are in place. And then I think only thereafter, we're looking at uh, truly international events coming in. Um, um, but we're, um, we're, 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 we're very po positive, optimistic to see that the local associations and societies that they are resuming their, their, their activities. Thank you for that update. And with uh, regard to your travel, I mean, are you also allowed to travel out of Dubai to attend any trade shows or any exhibitions? Yeah, such so there's no restriction uh, for, for residents in Dubai to, to travel outside the country. Um, um, you need to uh, have a negative COVID-19 test um, done um, when you are returning to the country, uh, just like any other visitor or any, any other traveler. Um, those are the requirements that you, have to, that you have to comply with. But apart from that, there are no restrictions um, that are preventing uh, residents in Dubai from traveling. And you mentioned that Emirates is, when, uh, if you fly with Emirates or with Fly Dubai, the cost is covered of uh, anything related to COVID uh, in Dubai. But does it apply vice versa? Uh, like if you go with a negative test and if you tend to have any, anything on the other part uh, of the destination, uh, is that also uh, covered or is that only when you are in Dubai? No, it's, uh, it's, it's an insurance that covers you wherever you fly on the Emirates or Fly Dubai network. So if you fly, say, out of Dubai on Emirates to a destination in, say, Europe, uh, and you would uh, 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 happen to, um, uh, to get the, uh, um, um, the, uh, the COVID-19 virus, you would still be covered um, by, the, uh, by the insurance provided by the airlines. 
So that's really a great, great uh, initiatives by uh, Dubai, and thank you for that update. Uh, one last thing, uh, you mentioned that you have guidelines now already for all your events. Is that available on your website? Uh, you know, for our audience, if they want to see uh, the guidelines, can they just go to your website and download it? Yes, we have a special uh, COVID-19 hub on our website with all the necessary information available, all the circulars that has been issued by Dubai Tourism and including guidelines uh, for all the various sectors, including for the event sector. So they are available uh, to download on our website. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Steen. And uh, I would like to uh, invite um, uh, Khalid to uh, uh, give us the feedback on um, uh, what is happening in Oman to briefly introduce us uh, what is the Oman Convention Bureau and what's, uh, you know, how it is uh, under Ministry of uh, Tourism and to just give us what is his challenge at the moment, keeping up with the, the policies and the standards and uh, perhaps uh, it's up to uh, updating the stakeholders or is it trying to analyze the demand uh, uh, in post-COVID? Uh, Khalid, would you like to address this question, please? Khalid? Um, Thanks, Andrew. Put it Thanks, up. everyone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone. And I believe uh, I will not add that much to my what colleagues was saying about, I think we almost having the same situations. And also we having the same existing situation. But in general, in Oman, maybe... Uh, uh, the, the format which we used is quite diff, uh, 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 in a different way. That it's more about to be analyze the situation. First, I mean, you know, everyone was not expecting COVID to be to be. I mean, just existing that strongly and be stable for that long. I mean, um, for Oman, we was 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 really hoping that uh, 2020 was the golden a year for the business tourism in general and the event especially. Uh, unfortunately, we, we, we faced this challenge, but then uh, we worked very closely with our past stakeholder. That's, I think, a very strong element to help us, support us to work together, either from the governmental side or from the private sector side. I mean, all the stakeholder locally work together, update us with the situations to know, to analyze it, and to see which part of it we need to work closely and support them on it. So. Uh, basically, so we have a two situation. We had a two situation. One, it's during the COVID, and also how we deal uh, post of COVID. What will we should done? How's the things? How the protocol uh, should be uh, analysis and, and all those things. So during, I mean, the situation was basically with uh, how can we the confirmed business is already there, the conferences, and how can we try instead of cancel it to postpone it and try to see the the minimum damage can be happened within this situation. I mean, uh, you know, uh, COVID situation by March becoming a serious issue within many parts of the world, especially in our region. And by March itself, we had a couple of very big and very good uh, conferences. We saw uh, it was really quite challenging, but uh, thanks God we managed to postpone most of our events and conferences to be held uh, from uh, uh, 21 on uh, onward so that's also you know to find the slots and to try to convince the international societies and try to find you know there is kind of those challenges with the organizing point of view which we work very closely with the local uh, societies and with the international societies in order to solve these problems more than that also try to update that's one of the important important uh, Things we should, we done during the COVID, where we try to update our stakeholders locally, internationally, our partners, and in general about Oman, about the situation in Oman, about uh, which is I'm sure it's not that big different between us and UAE and Qatar and other uh, in this in, in the Gulf region. It's almost the same, okay, but maybe it's like differently now. We regarding the update from the like a tr uh, airport, for example, we we, we uh, the airport would be operate. For, we was. Since COVID started, there was a, a charter operation was done for a certain destinations, certain cases. But now uh, the announcement came that uh, by 1st of October, the airport will be operate fully. So the, tra uh, the transport of air uh, transport will be very strongly operated. That will be it's a really huge movement. Uh, also, a month back, uh, allowing for the 
events organizer to organize the meetings uh, on the hotels, which is that also another step. So we we, we taking very uh, step very gradually, carefully, uh, studying the situation, studying the local situation in regional and international. As we are hearing very strongly about the second wave of of, of uh, COVID nineteen. Okay, but uh, luckily I think because of the restrictions, because of the you know the uh, uh, what you call. Uh, the, the, the conditions in, 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 in Oman regarding the people are really restrict and follow all the you know uh, direction what they get from the high committees to how how to be protect themselves from the COVID-19 issue so in general uh, the things is moving uh, it's in a better situations uh, uh, and we are looking really forward that uh, maybe uh, the most important things within the situation now, it's also to updating our partners, to tell them about the situation and how we could move and what's the best practical to move on that. So within that, uh, you know, we get gradually the hotels operating. Uh, in turn, I mean, domestically, our hotels really doing, uh, it's, it's a given of opportunity. It was become. I think we have lost him. Sorry, Dr. So while he comes back, uh, I would like to continue. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mubarak uh, to give us an update about uh, Abu Dhabi. Tell us what uh, is DCT. And uh, one message, because you are the um, uh, representative in uh, ICA board uh, for Middle East. And what, what recommendation, what tips would you give to the region? Thank you, Anjo. And, uh... Uh, hi everyone. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm the director of Abu Dhabi Convention and Exhibition Bureau. Uh, I think Khal just joined us. Uh, I think Khal, you have I'm sorry, you have last minute last thought. Sorry, Mark. I'll give you the mic. Thank you, thank you, Mark. I mean, I, I I already reached to my 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 last points about. Uh, it's the most important, you know, man, as, as I told you, the cases was not that big different between us and Dubai or Qatar or Abu Dhabi. It's almost the same uh, situations uh, uh, in the beginning. Everybody of us will try to work very hardly in order to, to how can we recover and try to be, you know, work together, uh, feed with information, analyze the situation. Then how we also to move forward in order to deal with, with this pandemic and try to, to make it. Uh, you know, less uh, effective for us, which is, I believe, uh, Oman done a great job in this. Uh, we work very closely with our partners. Uh, we managed to postpone many of our uh, conferences and events uh, uh, for the next couple of years, which is, was a really a very positive sign that our partners internationally, they trust on us, they believe on us, they want to still hold the events in Oman, which was really good. Uh, from the industry point of view, I, again, gradually we are uh, we are opening up uh, from, as I told you, from you, 1st October, the full operation of the airport, it will be there. Uh, more or less, there was, they, used, they operated in a daily basis, but mostly for the uh, charter, but now it will be with scheduled flights. Hotels operating, in fact, uh, you know, it's helped our domestic tourism now, our hotels in turn, inside, in, in Oman. In fact, it's almost the... the, 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 the uh, it's really full by the domestic tourism, which is an advantage, one of the really advantage of the COVID-19 that supporting the local tourism give a chance for us as a local or residents here to visit our uh, uh, this countryside. And he's, and he's gone again. So sorry about that. Um, I'm, I'm just going to wait for like 10 seconds so that we don't have to interrupt you, Mubarak. Uh, no issues at all. Yeah, he is. And he's back. So sorry. I think I have a problem with my phone. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. But it yeah, looks very natural. Much. It feels like as though we are online. It's okay. Yes. So thank you. This is what I could uh, for a time. And if you have any questions, more please. So I just wanted to ask uh, about your, uh, I know that your airline is starting in October and you mentioned uh, that all your, uh, most of your events are postponed. So is there any events before the end of the year that you are having? 
I mean, for a time being, uh, most of our events get postponed from from next week here on, onward. But you don't know, you know, the thing is changed. As as I mentioned, maybe there is a chance for some domestics uh, gathering. We are already having some uh, uh, local meetings uh, holding uh, in the hotels or in the venues. Okay, but you know, as 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 far we are going now with how the situation with the pandemic and uh, but for the international events so far for this year now we are we are postponed most of them from next year onward. And and I'm I'm very positive about uh, what's happening next year. I think with the with the good news we're hearing about the. Uh, vaccines is coming on the, very soon from the different uh, uh, yes. companies. I think uh, next year it will be it will not be that worse as what people was analyzing in the beginning of the pandemic. This will be maybe yes. still for next four years. I think it will be still less than that. I'm very positive by first quarter of next year we will hear very positive news about the, our industry. That's great. And just to ask you one last question, you, uh, is the by road borders also open? I mean, can uh, can we travel to Oman by road? Uh, now there is, now there is, as, as, as uh, I get an update, there is, there, yes, there is by uh, special cases between the, the borders, there is kind of special cases happening and they get the permission to move from from us to the other border or in, but as I as we we know there are now some 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 meetings happening between the GCC countries in order to uh, to agree on the on the uh, protocols of, of, of moving uh, the the residents or the local uh, the national to the border. For so maybe we'll be here very soon some 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 news on that. Great, thank you, Khalid. Uh, so we move thank now back to uh, Mubarak. I don't want to repeat that. Yes, Sanjo. Yes, yes, Sanjo. And so Mubarak to connect you. Sorry for that. Not at all, not at all, Khalid. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and it's good to see uh, my colleagues from the region here. Anju, answering to your questions, let me maybe uh, take you from uh, uh, a bird view uh, vision first, and then maybe I can cascade down to, to the region uh, or to the Abu Dhabi itself, the destination, maybe the country. And then maybe can answer a couple of other questions as uh, you may have uh, have in mind. L let me start with this. I think within within the region, within the MENA region specifically, I think in the past decade we we've seen a lot of evolving in various respects, and specifically within uh, the mice sector itself. I think we've uh, we've been able to witness a lot of remarkable uh, growth within uh, the MENA region. Uh, capturing the attention of uh, the government entities uh, and other entities who have recognized the importance uh, of the opportunities that the mice industry represents today, I think, uh, to the region, uh, which resulted in uh, many of uh, within the regions, many regions or many countries within our regions of those government entities providing a significant support uh, to, to this uh, industry to lift it up and to gain the fruits of this, because we know for a fact today how important the mice industry is and how it can affect the destinations or the regions overall. Uh, within Abu Dhabi, uh, especially, uh, we have been developing uh, the destination profile as a leading mice destination over the past decades. Uh, it has been very successful uh, in, uh, in elevating uh, our ranking and, and different ranking perspective, like the UIA and the ICA uh, ranking, which gave us some sort of uh, a roadmap or a direction of proof of where the destination is going, which I think it represents a very great insight uh, to, to our uh, success. I think the success behind this remarkable development today is due to many factors, multiple factors. But to keep it, uh, let me keep it in a little bit of a short uh, version of it. I think it has a very, uh, the destination, Abu Dhabi destination itself, has a very unique proposition over by the destination to the industries, to the stakeholders globally. I think uh, we know for a fact that Abu Dhabi today has not only developed to become one of the world top destination uh, for advanced infrastructure and technology, uh, which are very two important factors, I think, when we are considering destination uh, to host mice activities from the globe. But also it has offered uh, a very one-of-a-kind uh, blended experience 
which I think smoothly interwends pleasure and uh, business and leisure. Uh, as mentioned by my colleagues uh, within the region and specifically within the UAE, I think if we are seeing it uh, from overall, I think today the UAE has been leading the way in the region when it comes to the mice sector. And I think even beyond to become the knowledge and innovation hub today for this part of the world. I think our, uh, I know for a fact that our goal uh, for this coming years is to further expand our scope and strengthen our proposition as an emerging global mice destination. And as you all mentioned today, despite the setbacks we've been seeing today by the COVID-19, which we, it's been affecting all the destinations around the globe, I think uh, our team has been progressing towards the plans of the upcoming projects. It gave us the time and the capacity to look into, to have a laser focus. How can we help to increase the awareness of Abu Dhabi or our destination as an ideal destination for business tourism? Uh, also, within the Abu Dhabi perspective, uh, we have been seeing uh, a very strong establishment between partnership and relationship, which I can see the trend uh, of this among our partners within the region itself. Uh, to secure new local partners, uh, to work very closely with uh, government entities and authorities to discuss how we can futurely work together in order to enhance our mice industry. Because as we are, we are all aware of uh, our industry today, it's been linked to all our government entities and different sectors within uh, the destination. Overall, to what you have mentioned, uh, Anju, I think uh, we are feeling very much optimistic of what's going on. Uh, about the future and looking forward definitely for advancing the mice sector both regionally and globally. Uh, on the region, uh, I mean specifically on the region itself, I think our region, uh, our region is relatively new to the meeting industry. But I think we've been seeing a great development when it comes to securing great events or having great initiative uh, within our region. And this makes us, I think, much more of agile and flexible. And we are still looking into developing our industry in different sectors, health, agriculture, financial services, oil and gas, you name it. Uh, all those communities, as well as our meeting propositions as a region. Uh, definitely the COVID-19 uh, has seen, uh, has affected us uh, very, uh, very, uh, very, let's say, a challenging way, uh, let me put it in this way. But I know for a fact that our government and industry partners are looking into, give, uh, it gave us our governments and uh, entities uh, a different perspective in how are we looking into uh, our mice uh, sectors. How can we innovate? How can we find new ways of doing business today? And that's actually what we have been seeing today, which translates today into a great opportunity, I think, for the future events business. I know for a fact in the, in the near future, we'll, we'll see new trends coming into the markets and I think uh, to the industry. And I think this will definitely strengthen our skin, our, our industry skins and our region skin, alhamdulillah. Today, uh, as mentioned by my colleagues, we've seen great initiatives happening within different parts of our, initiative, uh, our region, which really reflects how forward are we We are as, uh, as a Middle East and MENA region when it comes to the mice sector. I think this will keep growing and, go, uh, and growing big. Communication between our partners uh, within uh, the mice industry and within our regions and with, with international associations, looking into how and what is the best practices in order to do the best businesses, uh, the best mice business or the best events within these during uh, the COVID-19, it's very vital and important. And how are we going to be translating into the new phase of the business events, I think, post-COVID-19, which I have a very uh, optimistic uh, feel about in the future. To, uh, to your question, uh, Andrew, just to add to, to your question, about the Abu Dhabi perspective on, uh, on the COVID-19. Today, we are still uh, prohibiting, uh, restricting the business events in Abu Dhabi until today. Uh, we have finalized internally the uh, guidelines uh, for the business events, uh, for the reopening uh, plans for uh, the business events within uh, Abu Dhabi specifically. 
but uh, the government is really focusing on the health and safety and uh, we want to make sure that uh, when we reopen we are uh, on top of uh, the health and safety uh, measures but uh, things uh, like malls attractions uh, economic sectors are open today but mass gathering uh, weddings uh, business events uh, still until today uh, not Great, thank you, Mubarak. Um, I mean, you also had an event, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Yas uh, a month ago, uh, some UCF uh, fight. Um, UFC, yes. UFC. We, fight, we, sorry. Yes, uh, UFC is is uh, is a very special case. UFC is uh, the Ultimate Fighter uh, competition, which we held in Abu Dhabi last year in October, and uh, this is a part of the UFC event which will happen again uh, in September, end of September and October. But within Abu Dhabi itself, it, was, it has no spectator itself. We created a bubble within, my, uh, within Yas Island itself. It was a great opportunity, great success for the event, great awareness for the destination. And the UFC uh, management and owners and all the people who love the UFC were, were very happy about this. Again, taking the pre-measures and making sure Business can be done, but within the very specific and uh, very careful pre-measures needs to be taken under consideration in order to keep the health and safety uh, of our uh, visitors to come to the destination. Of course, this doesn't mean that other events might, uh, might have the same uh, bubble kind of aspect like what we have in UFC. So this is why we learn a lot about these events. And I think uh, in the very near future, we will hear a very good news about reopening uh, fully for business in Abu Dhabi. That's, that's very good because uh, I think uh, this, the virtual world is here to stay and everybody is now looking at uh, more or less hybrid events. So when you have created this event already on virtual platform, which means that you are prepared to you know, uh, uh, already cater to uh, live events being virtually at the same time. So you sure. can cater to both. Uh, and so, is, is the, uh, I mean, your, your famous race, which happens, the Formula One, uh, is that uh, uh, going to happen or take place? Or is there any decision taken on that as of now? Uh, as part of today, it's still happening on December the 13th, uh, if my memory uh, doesn't, uh, uh, is correct. But uh, it, uh, Formula One itself, it will have its own uh, pre measures when it comes to this uh, from a spectator, uh, spectator perspective. So it might have certain restriction uh, to the event itself. But yes, it is still happening in, in Abu Dhabi. But back to your points, maybe when you mentioned the Anjou, uh, the virtual space, I think we all uh, from different regions here are my colleagues, we all have been uh, really uh, very active in, uh, in that perspective. From the region perspective, uh, from the overall region, I think uh, virtual world definitely is here to stay. We, we've seen the first time ever events that's happening uh, as virtual. Adibak, uh, the petroleum exhibition that's happening in Abu Dhabi, uh, supposed to happen in Abu Dhabi this November, is transformed into a virtual for the first time ever. And like other events also has been transferred into virtual or the hybrid aspect, as uh, my colleague Steen mentioned, there, there is certain within the local associations and local events will, will do have some sort of both things. But as you've mentioned, it's here to stay. And what I like about the region, I think there is a very clear communication today and, and one messaging about what is going on within the industry, what are the best solutions, and how can we cater for them. We're seeing today, as mentioned by my colleagues, BCOs and event organizers adapting the new virtual technologies and how can they work alongside those technologies in order to make sure they bring in their, uh, the right events for their audience, uh, they get the right uh, benefits from both parties, and how can, we, uh, how can they deliver the message that they want or this events represents to the even maybe wider audience uh, than ever before. But I think we will keep seeing this kind of uh, behaviors of, of uh, virtual uh, meetings happening on. And I think it's gonna be very interesting how things will be in the near future. Great, thank you. And it, you know that we are all waiting to meet face to face. Of course, uh, technology is never going to take that away. Now with all the uh, issues that we currently had, with uh, Khalid going on and off, 
I mean, that's not going to happen when we have face-to-face -face meetings. So are you uh, okay to travel by the end of the year? Uh, is that already uh, in the pipeline? Rest restriction is, is still not yet opened uh, for Abu Dhabi. Uh, there is certain uh, countries where we have bilateral agreement for traveling uh, and coming back uh, with, as government has uh, directed. But uh, as again, as Khaled mentioned today, we are hearing good news about a very clear, uh, very soon solution for this uh, pandemic. But things will uh, hopefully will uh, will see the bright side of this uh, very soon, inshallah. But as part of the day, no. But uh, until certain uh, certain countries or certain destinations. But again, these destinations has been updated on a daily basis, and uh, we've seen great. Uh, Direct response uh, from both parties. As you are aware, this should be a bilateral uh, agreements between uh, different destinations. Of course. Thank you so much, Muwar. Sure. If I may ask one question to Ahmed. Um, Ahmed, with uh, with the uh, 2022, uh, which is uh, now at the door, and we are already, I'm sure, you are preparing for it. Uh, with all your uh, stadiums, you're ready. Uh, are you planning to take some kind of uh, guidelines over there as well? Uh, have uh, is there any preparation towards that? I mean, uh, you know, for uh, the uh, social distancing or physical distancing. Regarding the twenty-two, you mean uh, the FIFA twenty-two? Uh, yes, world? yes, yes. I mean, uh, I'm sure we are all moving forward. And uh, we are, uh, you know, hoping that everything goes fine. But uh, there must be some thought process to put together towards every venue to be virtually, you know, to have uh, geared towards the uh, social distancing or, you know, depending on what the crowd management is. Everybody is working towards the crisis management. So... Is there any uh, plans in, in looking forward for Qatar to go uh, with uh, some kind of, um, you know, guidelines for that as well? Or I, I'm sure you already have your live events uh, guidelines, which is on your uh, website as well. Uh, when it comes to re reopening back the business, we are uh, uh, implementing uh, the ICA standards as long as with the UFI. Uh, for reopening back the venues, the hotels, uh, restaurants, and so on. Uh, when it comes to the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy of uh, the FIFA 2022, there will be spe spe yeah, adaptable measures that will uh, be, let's say, used in that period. Uh, as an individual or as all of us as a human being, we are looking very positive to all the the testing of the vaccine that's been a bit that's going on right now and the positive outcomes that we are hearing from uh, some of my colleagues. Uh, so we are pushing now also for the meeting events and for people to come back together uh, to be able to meet and to open back the business to uh, to be able to see uh, to see you and the rest of the team face to face. Uh, so I think we are stronger than than this pandemic. I. Personally, again, also, uh, we need to control uh, how the media put or how the media, let's say, is uh, uh, putting or uh, visualizing uh, this disease to us, especially now we are coming to the, the end of the stages of it and we're, we are uh, capable of coming up with a vaccine and all. Uh, although, again, for the Supreme Committee, they have their own adaptable uh, standards and it's under the FIFA itself and there will be like a committee uh, looking at all the standards by the end to have a remarkable experience. Uh, this is what we are looking for. Great. Thank you so much. So if I may ask my panel just one word to say to the, the community, uh, one tip or, uh, you know, one, one strong message. Um, what would you like to say if they have to take away one word from you? Mubarak, one word? So oh, uh, you have to start uh, from my side. <laughs> I, You're I, I leading think, the region. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, 
be optimistic. Uh, I think the region is, uh, as I've mentioned, is doing very well. And I think uh, I really see great, great, great initiative going on in the future. Being optimistic is the key of moving forward, I think, and resulting to great business events at the end of the day. Not only in business events, even other areas, but definitely be, also, uh, be optimistic about the future and things will uh, be fine. Thank you. What about you, Khalid? One word? Uh, be positive. I'm very positive. That uh, 2020, uh, yeah, be positive. 2021, I think it will be, it will not be as bad as 2022. I will not say bad. I will not be like that same experience. And, and we are looking for a great experience for our industry, starting from the uh, second uh, quarter of 2021. Thank you. Steen? Well, I would say that collaboration is key. Um, collaboration has been a key word in our industry already for many years, and there's some great examples of, of, uh, of, of how far collaboration can take individual venues, destinations, cities, and countries. But I think in the situ situation we're in now, more than ever, collaboration across a wide range of various stakeholders, also collaborating with some more untraditional partners is key to move us beyond, uh, to move us beyond the pandemic. So I definitely encourage much more collaboration uh, and to push that agenda even further. That will, that will bring us out much stronger. Thank you. Ahmed. I would say we are ready. We are connected. We are ready. We're ambitious. We're positive. We're looking forward uh, to see you, all of you on face to face here in Qatar and before the 2022. Very good. So we have being optimistic, positive, collaboration and connecting. Uh, that brings us to this uh, uh, great session to an end. Uh, and before we end, I would like, uh, of course, to, uh, uh, to invite everybody to our um, uh, ICA event this year. And um, I look forward to seeing us face to face and, um, uh, you know, not uh, a virtual platform and definitely to see you in the next IMAX uh, in Frankfurt. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.